Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back in our journey toward learning about special women with a special character and a special landmark in our history. Today, we are coming later on to the 9th century, where in the 800 year, a woman by the name of Fatima al-Fahri was born in Tunisia, Qayrawan. This woman grew up in privileged home. Her father was a merchant, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, who in her lifetime when she was young, he decided to move to Morocco with her and her sister. Something special about her, we don't know a lot of details about her life. We don't even know exactly when she died. But what do we know about her? If you go to Fez, there is a place in Fez that it is a landmark everyone has to visit. That place called Masjid al qarawiyin the Mosque of al qarawiyin and the University of al qarawiyin What is the relationship between this and Fatima al-Fahri? When Fatima's father died, she inherited a lot of money. She decided to do something different than anybody else. Her vision was education, spread education. Not only she learns, but mainly facilitate learning for the others. So she opted with the wealth she inherited to build a mosque and a university. And rest assured, that's what happened. She bought a land and then she built the mosque and the university by the name of Al-Qarawiyin, which is similar to the name of where she was born in Tunisia, Al-Qayrawan. This mosque became the first mosque, the largest mosque and the largest university in North Africa. And it attracted a lot of students from all over the world. This university is recognized by UNESCO and Guinness Book as the first degree granting university in the world. Again, this was built by a woman, Fatima al-Fahri. This university was not only offering Islamic sciences, it was offering sciences in different branches, Islamic studies, astronomy, philosophy. It graduated one of the most famous Muslim scholars, Ibn Khaldun, famous philosopher Ibn Rushd. This university not only graduated famous Muslim scholars, actually graduated Christians, Pope Sylvester II. This Pope introduced Arabic numerals to Europe as we know it these days. At age 59, she actually enrolled herself in the university and she graduated from the university. Never too late to learn. Never put any obstacle to learn. And her diploma is actually written on a piece of food and it's still there in the university. Qarawin University is regarded as the most ancient university that's still operating. It preceded the University of Boulogne by 100 years. The mosque itself is one of the most ancient mosques. It's actually before the mosque in Tambacto. The library of the Qarawain University is one of the oldest libraries in the world. It contains more than 4,000 manuscripts. So I was blessed to actually visit Fez and visit the mosque and the university. Piece of art, full of serenity, full of beauty. And as you walk around, you absolutely see history is written in that place. And you really look around and wonder what was in the mind of this woman when she thought of it. No one before her did that. And when she had a plan or actually had a vision, had a plan, she executed the plan. We don't know much about the obstacles, but I am sure there were so many obstacles. It's a huge place, piece of art, beautiful. And anything beautiful, usually we have to put a lot of efforts and usually we get obstacles. And as I was walking around, I kept thinking of who was she and how dedicated this woman was to education, not only to women education, 
education in general. She didn't feel that being a woman is an obstacle to build something as unique as an ancient and now as a landmark in Guinness Book and UNESCO as al Qarawin. Do I wish I had met this woman? Absolutely, I do. In 2017, she was honored by a prize in her name in Tunisia. And the prize is given to those who start initiatives to make it easy for people to encourage access to training and professional responsibilities. Don't we all want to be Fatima al-Fahri, where we start something no one else before us has started? But the most important thing, that what she started had helped thousands of people pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and left a landmark, physical landmark, that no one goes to Fez without seeing it. Even if you don't want to see it, you have to see it. May Allah bless her soul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us what he gave her. Oh.